It's a titration, isn't it? You just it is a titration. Start off on three thousand. Yeah. For most people, I think it would be fair that we probably need. I'm sure I need about eight thousand yeah. a day personally yeah. for my yeah. body weight. Well, I think um, that's right. So you could argue that someone weighs one hundred and twenty kilograms for an excess of your weight might need twelve thousand units a day. Yeah. Yeah. But again, it's a matter of um, measuring it. With body weight, by the way, the obese people do not um, have good blood levels of vitamin D. The vitamin D they produce in the skin tends to be soaked into the fat cells of the body and it doesn't seem to come out again. So if you take an obese pe person and a non-obese person, expose them both to the same amount of sunlight or UV light, the obese person will produce perhaps only half the amount of vitamin D in, in, as measured in the blood than the non-obese person. So obese people do require more vitamin D. There's no easy measure of immunity. In fact, the blood level of vitamin D is a reasonable surrogate for, the, for measuring immunity. Because we know if people have high levels of vitamin D in the blood, good levels, they don't get infections like flu or COVID. And if they have low levels of vitamin D, they do get a lot of COVID, flu, and also a lot of other diseases as well. So immunity is best measured actually by vitamin D. Anyway, so we start off and we, we, we measure the response and we get there. And somehow it's going to be about 6,000 units a day. That seems reasonable and it is perfectly safe. So it's quite possible that you could give you and me 6,000 units of vitamin D a day each yep. and for genetic reasons, for microbiome reasons, for maybe a thousand reasons we don't understand, yeah. I don't understand yeah. certainly, yeah. we could end up with really quite different levels, there's a yeah, difference indeed. in response. Indeed. Now what I find really curious here is that the vitamin D levels that are advised were basically worked out to prevent rickets back yeah. in the 1920s yes that's right and we've learned all these new functions and no one's bothered no no <laughs> to, indeed to, to update yeah. the requirement it just Absolutely. seems utterly bizarre well it's now possible to measure the mass of uh of vitamin d and one gram sorry one unit weighs 25 billionths of a gram <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, it's not very much. Yeah, yeah. So what you find out, that when you get capsules of vitamin D, no matter what the dose of vitamin D is, they all look the same. Yeah. <laughs> and people yeah. can't get their minds around this for obvious reasons. Actually tiny, yeah. But 99% of the content of vitamin D capsule is olive oil. Mm. There's a tiny bit of vitamin D by mass mm. and by volume, because it's, mm. uh, it's an oil. Yeah. So why, why can't we test immunity by doing a differential? I'm sure you've ordered differential white cell, cell counts about 10,000 times. Yes, that's yeah. right. But that's um, <laughs> looking at the different types it, of white blood cell. Yeah, that's right. It so still could, could doesn't quite be, work out. Could there be a situation where you had the right number of white blood cells, the right number of lymphocytes and the right number yeah. of neutrophils? But because you haven't got enough vitamin D, they could be physically present, yes. but physiologically um, suboptimal in their physiological activity. That's the problem, it's, it's the function, not the structure. The T cell, the T lymphocytes are critical, and the T lymphocytes are very dependent on vitamin D for their activation, but also very badly damaged in AIDS. And AIDS, of course, mm. leads to infections, malignancies, because immunity is suppressed. And it gives a very good example, actually, of how immunity is suppressed. When it is suppressed, it leads to a lot of, a lot of illnesses, strange infections, malignancies in AIDS, heart disease in AIDS, dementia in AIDS. A lot of things came out in AIDS which told us the importance of immunity, and in particular T-cell function.